Good afternoon, everybody. Well, I have this question which came from at Rebecca Chalky 3252. Well, there are several questions from her, so I'm going to answer them one at a time. And there are questions from at STSTT77 and Mount Athos. And I'm going to do them all one at a time, so please be patient with me and I will answer all these questions um, as we proceed. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. But uh, Rebecca Chalky, now she asked a question, how did you initially develop an interest in snakes? Did you have mentors or books that gave you your early knowledge? Well, my early knowledge was too early for books. I was about four or five years old. This was a very significant event. And this is what gave me the initial impetus to begin on a lifelong quest to capture, keep, understand, study, lecture on, etc. snakes. And my interest in wildlife in general all stemmed from this time. I was born in a town called Ermelo, which is in the eastern Transvaal, now called Pumalanga. And at the age of two or three, uh, we moved to a town called Barberton. Now, Barberton is a fascinating place, very, very beautiful. It's kind of built up now and a little scrappy. But in those days, it was a gem. It was a jewel, a, a drop of dew in, uh, in the wilderness. And the town was situated just below some beautiful big mountains, beautiful mountain range. Now, uh, Barberton was discovered by the Barber brothers, <clears throat> who were reportedly drinking in a bar and got drunk. And one of the Barber brothers, when he went home, passed out and fell asleep and uh, woke up in the morning with his head on a rock except the rock was a gigantic gold nugget. And he ran up into the hills and uh, staked a claim and uh, the, the diamond, I mean the gold mining began in Barberton. Funnily enough, in the Barberton area, there are Indian artifacts which predate any settler in the area. So for a long, long time before anybody ever entered the area, of Barberton, there were Indians from India in there, in that area, and they left behind them relics which have been able to be identified. So we moved there and we lived on the outskirts of town. Ours was the second last house in a street called De Villiers Street, right near the prison. Um, and it was very rural in those days. In fact, there was still lion uh, to be found uh, not too far from Barberton in the bush. Very wild and masses of snakes, mambas, cobras, tree snakes called Boomslang, uh, bird snakes, puff adders, the lot. The place was just full of snakes. Anyway, at the age of four, between four and five, I was walking in our yard. The yard was very big. It was <clears throat> probably four acres. And uh, it had three terraces in the lower reaches of the garden. The top terrace was uh, lawned and mowed. And then the second terrace had a lot of plants in it. The last terrace was just wild felt grass, wild grasses. And I had walked down from the upper terrace to the second terrace and then wandered around a bit, then moved down to the lowest terrace. Now, on the lowest terrace was a huge big piece of cardboard. And I went over to the cardboard and I'd become accustomed to the fact that things lying around in the garden, if lifted, might show an interesting animal lying or living, sheltering temporarily underneath. So I went up to the cardboard 
and I pulled it to one side and there lay a huge dark brown light gray in that color range snake pretty thick big head very slender and it was a black mamba I wasn't quite sure at the time but I became sure as time passed and this was a black mamba and I was only four to five years old now I obviously had options at that point and my options were to run, to scream or to stay and watch the snake. So a calm came over me. All my fear left me. I felt no fear whatsoever and I stood there transfixed and I found the snake to look particularly graceful and beautiful. And even in my small immature mind, I imagined that this snake was water covered with a loosely fitting skin, which allowed it to move so gracefully and, and so evenly and so easily. And it lifted its head up, looked at me, and then it started, while still looking at me, to move off in the opposite direction, whereafter it dropped its head and moved off very quickly and very gracefully and very elegantly until it disappeared into the long grass. And I was, I remained there transfixed. And I remember the feeling it gave me was one of some joy at seeing one of these most magnificent creatures in this manner. And my mind was untainted being so young. So I hadn't formed any opinion yet. That formed for me my first good impression. And the good impression was for observing snakes in the wild. And that, I believe, was my earliest beginnings in terms of herpetology. Hey, by the way, I do have Patreon, so you can join me there too.